I found onions on sale. Three pounds for a dollar. Well, that's a deal. Um, on the menu today, we'll make Zwiebelkuchen. That um, translates maybe into onion tarts. It's so delicious. It's like a pizza overloaded with onions and some bacon. And the recipe comes from my high school cookbook. Yo, we had to take home economics classes, and I'll post the translation below. So let's get started. Let's get started. This mighty meal takes really minimum ingredients. First, we need to make a, a, the dough, a yeast dough. It's kind of like a pizza dough, but it's not. You may only have flour, butter, salt, a little bit of sugar to get the yeast going, some milk, salt, and then for the topping, it'll be onions. Yes, lots of onions. Paprika, caraway, salt, some fresh pepper. If you don't like paprika or caraway, leave it out, but the caraway, in my opinion, is really good in it. And then you put some bacon or ham in it. In my case, both. It's still frozen. I always keep a little bit stacked away in the freezer. And we also need some sour cream. Now, you can make this vegetarian by leaving the uh, meat out, but this is not going to come together vegan, so you guys are out of luck. Now, this empty dish right here, that's where the egg's supposed to be, but let me show you something. Look at him. It's hidden in the sugar cane. <laughs> no wonder we can't see that in the evening. We've got to keep an eye on this. Thankfully, there is one. No running to town. Was it you? Did you do that? Did you? There are nest boxes inside the coop. How about that? <laughs> so first we make this pre-dough. You make a little dimple in there. And then you put your yeast in it. And your sugar on top of the yeast. Don't put the salt in yet. And then the milk, and the milk has to be warm, not um, heated up to where, you know, room temperature is fine, a little bit warmer than that, but don't make it too warm or it will kill the, the good yeast. And we just mix that up a little bit, it's running out, and then we let that sit. This is called a pre-dough, and I think it's a, uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think this used to be done to see if the yeast is good. Because if the yeast is not good, then it wouldn't rise with that pre-dough and you don't lose it all. You can put different yeast in it, I guess. But old habits are hard to break, so I still make this. But I do not have the patience of the old timers. And I'll just let it sit there for a little bit to see what's going on. And then we keep proceeding with that. So usually you would let that sit for 30 minutes, but I don't think I'll make it that long. And you just cover it up. And do something else in the meantime, like vacuuming the kitchen floor. So it's been about 10 minutes, and we'll just check it in, and look, it's alive, all right. It's bubbling up nicely. I give it another 10 or so, and then we'll go on. A big reveal. Nothing much happened, so I'm done waiting. When I put an egg in, I whip that up. The one and only precious. Who knows how long it takes till we see another one. And then the butter, boing, and some salt. Now is the time to salt it. If you have salted butter, use a little less. And I will just bring this together. First, I do this, and then I need my hand, so I need to put you down. And I'll show you what a nice ball of dough this is going to turn out. There it is. It's nice and smooth. Now we'll cover it up and let it rise to about double. This rose nicely. See how nice and soft. Now it's just a matter of rolling it out and putting it on the baking pan or pizza pan, whatever you use. There and any flaps. I'm not cutting this stuff or making measurements, so I just roll them over because I do have a dough eater and he'll go for the outside crust. And now we let this sit again. I use the same. Um, Cling wrap I used earlier for the dough, put this on and let, we let it rise for another 20-30 minutes. Eek! My seed order just came in. Fava beans. 
This is my third year trying to grow them. It hasn't worked before. They always got those black aphids. Purple kohlrabi, yummy. Mizuna, that's good stuff. That's a Chinese mustard. Watercress, love watercress. And of course the daikon radishes. Need to get that dinner done so I can put some seeds in the ground. So the dough is rising, that's going to take another while. In the meantime, I already chopped up the bacon and the ham. You want those pieces to be fairly small because if you have big chunks in there, it just doesn't go well together. This is just a little blend the flavor in a little bit. And here are my enemies. <laughs> this is the bad part. They have to be sliced relatively thin, like really thin. Yeah, by hand, that's a lot of tears. You can use a mandolin. That's still quite a bit of tears. I'm going to use the um, food processor this time. It may not be ideal because they tend to get all the juices squeezed out, but we'll see how sharp my blade still is. Now, when it comes to onions, you, you know, you don't use the sweet onions. I made the mistake. I thought that saves me all this crying, but they don't work well. They're too wet and they don't have enough taste. Because even if you're not too much into onion, once this is baked, it's not hot. It's just oh, really good. <laughs> but use yellow or red or, or purple, whatever you can find, but not the sweet ones. They're way too wet. Bam, <laughs> somebody just slammed the door. So this worked much better than I thought it would. I didn't give my food processor blade enough credit. It's still sharp as can be. They're all peeled. My tears are rolling. My nose is running. And now we have to put them in the pan. I mean, I'm still crying. So you need a, a big pan, okay? Or you need to do it in stages. Now, because I have bacon and ham, I'm taking advantage of that bacon fat and I'll put this in first. If you only have ham, you can do your onions first with some fat and then put the ham in or the other way around. Either way, you will need some grease, but obviously the bacon is going to render quite a bit of stuff out of here and that will help get the onions going in a minute. So here we go, it greased the pan, not a lot, but it, while it's in there with the onions, it'll render some more, and now these go in, and then more tears. <laughs> I have these on the highest setting on my biggest burner, and they're coming along quite nicely. See, they're losing some moisture, they actually weren't that wet at all. And this takes about, well, it depends on your stove, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You want them where they're kind of translucent. You don't want them all cooked. You just want to pre-cook them so that when they go in the oven, they get their caramelized kind of roast thing. I'll give these another two or three minutes maybe, and then we're good. All right, that's good enough for me because see when I scoot it aside, there is no really any juice left. Not really, not no any. Sometimes I think language is hard. <laughs> um, and they, they're really, they're all translucent. So I let them cool off a little and then we add the sour cream. Time for the spices. I already added the black pepper because it comes out of a meal. And I can't do that one handed. So we'll put it in just a little bit paprika and here come the caraway seeds. That gives it that special nutty thing. Time to preheat the oven at 400. The dough on the sheet's been sitting there for about 30 minutes and it puffed up some more and I forgot to mention earlier, poke some holes in it with a fork. Of course, if you bake this in a big oven, you want to preheat this sooner because mine's the toaster oven. It's preheating in three minutes. The onions are pretty much cooled off and now we'll just <laughs> spun kind of cool. And now I'm incorporating the sour cream in all the onion mixture. And then sour cream's in and now it's just a matter of time. 
A matter of time. There's another one of my things. Sometimes I think I can't talk. I wonder if that's in real life too or just when I'm recording. So it's just a matter of spreading it out. So this dish used to be one of the poor farmer's dishes in Germany because the onions came in. It's a typical fall dish. And what you do, you make this and then you have it with hard cider, fresh hard cider. Now that's not the stuff you can buy in stores. In Germany, there are a lot of apple trays and a lot of uh, apple press people, people who have presses to press the apple for juice. And then people buy the fresh apple juice and let it ferment into hard cider. There's no sugar in it or anything. It's just really, really good. And you have this with cider, which we call Suso. <laughs> That's delicious. Also, this is super, super inexpensive. And so good. I mean, you buy a pizza, even a frozen cheap pizza costs, what, five bucks? This is less, even with some better ingredients, much better ingredients than in a frozen pizza. In the oven it goes. It's going to be in there 45 minutes, but please put your timer on 30 and start checking what's going on. Your oven may be different than the one from the recipe and you don't want to burn anything. This is it. Oh my goodness. I'm so hungry. I know it doesn't look like much, but it tastes so good. I'm going to let this cool for a little bit, take it off the baking sheet. I will cut it up and look what it looks like. Oh, look at all the bits and pieces of ham and bacon. Finally. You can eat this hot out of the oven or cold. Or any which way in between and also this freezes really really well so you have it's almost like a pizza right but it's with this delicious soft onion mm, sour cream filling now there's another version of this too that makes it really high so it more looks like a, a cake that's how tall it gets it has eggs in it. Um, maybe I make another video of that, or maybe I hang it on to this one. I haven't decided yet because right now I need to eat. There it is, finally ready to eat. I have a beer with it. I misspoke when I said earlier it's Suzer. It's not Suzer. Suzer is made from that's fresh fermented juice from grapes. What we drink it with is Mosht, which is from apples. Mm. And now I get to dive into this.